Hey out there, it's time for another Sonic Boom Vlog. Um, not to break the illusion, but I did just finish filming the intro to my previous video, so... Um, yes, I changed my shirt to create the illusion of, um, of change, but you may notice that my hair still looks exactly the same, or, uh, something like... Happy- oh, by the way, happy daylight savings time! Don't forget to turn your clocks forward an hour. Okay, so as promised, the first thing I'm going to do is give the Sonic the Hedgehog Speed Soda a try. Uh, will this be on par with the Rainbow Dash Soda? Well, actually, the Rainbow Dash Soda wasn't an energy drink. It's just, um, it was just a cherry, a, a cherry soda. I guess since it has Rainbow Dash on it, they were, they were, um, thinking it was far more likely that children would drink this particular soda, so they... They didn't make it an energy drink because, you know, energy drinks can be bad for, for young children. I mean, not that soda's good for them, but, you know, soda's not bad for them. And again, this is Sonic the Hedgehog, and it's an energy drink. Um, I guess because it's classic Sonic, that's the thing that's going to make it appeal to adult audiences. Okay, so... Boston America Corporation, hmm? Product not intended for children. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just carbonated water, high fructose corn syrup, citric acid, sodium citrate, taurine, cap, uh, natural flavorings, caffeine, potassium sorbate, potassium benzoate, that's a preservative, uh, ginger root extract, guayana seed extract, in, inosidol, no, inosidol, sorry, niacinamine, that's vitamin B3, it has D, calcium? They put calcium in this? Pan pantothenate, vitamin B5. It, it, it's just a little mass of, uh, of, of uh, vitamins and, uh, and stuff that gets your adrenal glands to produce insulin so you can stay energized. Uh, yeah, that, that's your basic energy drink recipe. If you read any energy drink, you'll see those ingredients like Red Bull, Monster, um... Now I'm sure there's some other energy drinks that are that I'm forgetting. Okay, so let's open it up. I kept it in the fridge overnight, so it's nice and cold. Okay. Mmm, it smells really good. It smells very sweet. Let's see what color it is. It's, uh... It's very dark. It's almost black. This is like the color of Coca-Cola. Yeah, so it's... Yeah, it's a very dark. It's a very dark color. It's a, it's the same color as Coca Cola. Hmm. Hmm. The flavor has layers. Like, it's one flavor in your mouth, and then as you swallow it, other flavors come out. Some of it's settled on the lip. Oh! Okay, it's not the color of Coca-Cola. It's actually blue. It's actually a rather light blue. Hold on, let's get this... Let's get this right up to the camera so you can see. Yeah, when it was... When it was deep, it didn't really... It didn't really sh uh, show. But look... I hope... I hope that's actually showing up. See? Right there on the lip, some of it's settled. It's a blue. It's a very blue soda. So it's actually kind of the same color as Mountain Dew Voltage. Mountain Dew Voltage or, um, you know, just general blue sodas you find out there. Like Coca-Cola Blue or something like that. No, no, it was Pepsi Blue. Pepsi made the blue soda. Uh, cannot place that flavor. It doesn't really taste like anything I drank before. It's good though. It has the same kind of sharpness that Red Bull has, but that's probably just because it's uh, citrus based. <clears throat> okay, 
I'll probably nurse that a little bit as we talk about the video. So let's talk about Sonic Boom, the cartoon episode they gave today. This was, um, uh, how to be good at evil without even trying. Oh, one more thing. My store got a second shipment of these in. It's the Mega Man Amiibo. Yep. So for now, that's actually all the Amiibos that I wanted. I got, um, Mega Man, Sonic. I got, um, Fox, Samus, Link. I believe those are all the Amiibos I have. Oh yeah, I also have the Pit Amiibo. Pit. Here. Um, those are all the Amiibos that I personally wanted. Uh, unless they come out with like a Zero Suit Samus. Uh, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure I'm going to be good in the Amiibos for now. So, yeah. Alright, so how to, how to be good at evil without even trying. This episode starts with Sticks Picking Berries. Um, sticks picking berries. It's a pretty ordinary thing for her to do. It turns out she's going to enter a pie contest, and they, she says that they'll never guess that beige berries are the secret ingredient to her pie. And it makes me wonder, that's actually a pretty good secret ingredient. I mean, beige berries? Beige. The color that is synonymous with boring. No one is going to think of beige berries being used to make a delicious pie. Of course, she mentions that if one of the trees is a spy, then uh, the beige, then that might, the secret might get out. So she takes out her boomerang and says, I got my eye on you, trees. So Tails comes by in a hovercraft. Um, oh, and I know this is an actual hovercraft. Like, it's propelled by fans and stuff. I just feel that I should mention that because we're... Because so many other other hover technology in the Sonic Boom universe is just like some magical Jetsons hovering thing. Not like an actual fan-driven hovercraft like what exists in the real world. Um, anyway, Tails comes by and he sees that Styx is picking berries and he he says that he'll help her. So he goes back to his, uh, his lab and he starts inventing something. He makes something that looks like a combination of a wood chipper, a bulldozer, and it has a it has ears, so it's kind of supposed to look like a fox face. Um, so yeah, he builds that, and he gets a gigantic battery, which he has Sonic charge up on like an exercise bike type thing, uh, until it's so char until it's so juiced up that the that it 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 releases a wave of, of electricity that that chars uh, Tails' fur. Uh, so he puts it in, and he drives up, and Six is like, what? what's that? And, and he's like, oh, this is something I'm going to use to help you. And, he, dry, and he, he remote controls it, and it just completely mulches all of the trees in the orchard. Like, like, like Sticks is pissed. He's like, you destroyed the entire orchard. It's just like, when, when Tails sees the thing is starting to devour all the trees, he's like, uh, my work here is done. And he tries to walk away, but she grabs him. That's what she scolds him about destroying the orchard. He says, uh, you still got the berries, because the berries are all over the ground. But the stupid thing is still moving, so it runs over the berries and starts to spit out all the berry goo from its thing. And then the, so the rest of Sonic's friends come up and they're like, like, um, what happened? Tails, what happened here? Looks like he got himself into a jam. Ha <laughs> ha! Am I... Get it? Not at all! But I'd never leave a hedgehog hanging. Seriously, like, do they have to hammer home that Knuckles is an idiot every time? I mean, come on. Like, Knuckles can't even get a simple joke. I mean, there is literally jam covering the entire orchard area, and they still have to make it so that Knuckles doesn't get your jam pun. Come on, writers. Uh, um, hmm. Fifteen years ago, Knuckles was the star of a spin-off comic book series that was derided for being too serious and grimdark and actually being more like a soap opera than an action comic. Now, he doesn't understand a jam pun. There is nothing between extremes in, in cartoons or comics, is there? You can either have the hyper-serious thing that, that's going to alienate a lot of your cast, a, a lot of your fan base that, 
that likes that likes uh, that likes humor and a lighthearted tone, or you're gonna have something so lighthearted and goofy that that um that you know it's gonna it's gonna alienate people that like the more serious stuff. Is what I'd say, except that stuff like Adventure Time, Steven Universe, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and um, and going back to the old days, Avatar, uh, The Legend of Korra, which only recently ended, you know, all that stuff exists and existed, you know. Oh! Um, before I forget, uh, after they gave the new episode, they gave last week's episode of Sonic Boom again, and there was a commercial during that episode for the, for the Transformers Robots in Disguise cartoon. It'll be premiering next Saturday at 6 p.m. And that's almost prime time. That's that's actually really awesome. That's an awesome time slot. And I never expected it. I expected that it would be stuck on at 6 a.m. or something. And it's going to be an hour-long premiere. So that... Hey, maybe there's hope for the new Transformers cartoon after all. I don't know if that's going to be a regular slot because they also premiered Thundercats and Green Lantern on a prime time slot, but then moved it to Saturday morning later on. Um, <clears throat> but that's, uh, besides the point, we're moving on. Uh, we're talking about the cartoon. So, so, um, the, Tails' Tails's machine is being observed by these guys in cloaks, and, uh, they realize how, how evil this kid is. Like, he'd be perfect for our evil organization. Let's go send him a crimson letter. So, um, while everyone's over at the Pie Festival, Tails has been tasked with planting the seeds so that the orchard can regrow. <clears throat> and we see him flying around to do it with his tails. You know, it's actually funny how rare it is we get to see Tails do his little Tails flight thing, despite the fact that it used to basically be his sole superpower before he became the tech wizard. Um, yeah, so these guys in the cloaks, they come along with a letter, and they invite Tails, and for some reason, Tails can't open the letter, so they just tell him that they're, he's invited to join the, um, the Lightning Bolts. Yeah, the, uh, it's a club called the Lightning Bolts. So they're like, so he's like, okay, that's how, I'd love to go along with you strangers. <laughs> like, um, I don't know. They, like, right there, they're, they're, they're sticking along how stupid Tails is being for going along with strangers. Like, like, um. I know Tails is usually supposed to be the smart one, but this is a kid who wanted to pick berries, so he invented a machine that mulches a forest. <laughs> yeah, um, that's not what that should do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> um, yeah, they, they call it a deforestation device. Uh, let's see. Um, but how did this episode flow? I'm, I'm, I'm starting to forget. Oh yeah, um, Tails says that he'd love to go along with the strangers, but he, but he has to plant all these seeds. So they take out this gun, and they shoot, and, and it shoots seeds into the soil. So he does the entire field in seconds. So, um, so like, cool, how, wh where'd you get that thing? How much did it run? Oh, let's just say it was a steal. And, um, I'm not going to spoil until a few seconds later, but uh, if you if you recognize the characters' voices, you'd have an, even though their faces are covered by those cloak hoods, you should know who's talking. So it's good for the savvy. It's it's good to get something for the savvy viewers. Like, hey, I know that voice. Um, <clears throat> so they do a cutaway gag to where they're rooting around in Doctor Eggman's trash. Um, oh, one more thing. Uh, they really missed an opportunity for a little bit of humor by making at least one of the members of the Lightning Bolts a raccoon. Um, you know, because raccoons are famous for rooting around in garbage. But, we don't get a raccoon. Oh, you know what? I actually forgot one more thing. Oh man, I suck at this. Um, all the trees in the orchard are destroyed, but there's one tree still standing. And it turns out to be a spy disguised as a tree. And he runs off. Like... Seriously, Styx's paranoid delusions always seem to be coming true. It's like, like, just, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean that they're not out to get you. <laughs> really? That's, wow! 
If, if Styx was ever in therapy for her paranoid delusions, shit like this would undo months of work. Um, okay, so I promise it's the last thing I forgot. Um, so Dr. Eggman chases the guys off after for rooting through his garbage, and the, they, they took the seed gun out of the trash. That's what the that's what it was. Um, and uh, he's like, I gotta invent something to keep those guys out of my trash. So he looks around and he puts a brick on top of the on top of the the dumpster lid. There, that should do it. <sighs> I like that. <laughs> um, okay, so. Tails is at this little club meeting, and it's and he's like he's like wolfing down all the hors d'oeuvres. He's like, you know, it's not Tails. It's not really good. I know you're only eight years old, but it's not really cool to just wolf down the hors d'oeuvres at a potluck like that. And when they ask what he brought to the potluck, he says that all he brought was uh, the beige berry jam. If, if that's from when the trees got mulched, and uh, the that there's dirt in it, <laughs> cause you know. He probably just scooped that stuff off the ground and put it in jars. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, but that that actually endears him because that's he's because he's more evil. Like he goes to a potluck, he eats all the food from the potluck, and the only thing he brought was dirty jam. <laughs> like, like how evil is this kid? He's awesome. They they actually want to make him their leader because he's the most evil of all of them. <laughs> oh, tails. Tails, you're evil. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh. Okay, so. Gee, nice. Thanks for having a loud telephone conversation that can be heard right through my room. Um. Okay, so. Phew. I gotta. I gotta stay on track. I keep losing focus. More energy drink. Ah, yes. It makes your teeth tingle. That's how you know it's a good energy drink. Um, so, uh, Sonic's friends go back to the orchard, and they find that all the seeds are planted. And they brought him a pie from the fest, you know, just... You know, because you punish your kid, but you also reward them for actually going through the punishment. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but they find that um, all the seeds are planted. And Styx is like... He couldn't have done all this unless, and Amy chimes in, um, he used one of his inventions. I was gonna say alien magic, but your thing works too. And then, um, all the, and then the, the, the orchard sprouts forth, not with, not with baseberry trees, but mutant mouth plants. Like, like, um, I think this might be a vague reference to the Krutsu, um, plants from the first Sonic the Hedgehog comic book. But um, the difference being that those were robot plants that were actually weak against water, while these are like genetically engineered flytrap things. Uh, evil. And um, and they see like these plants are just randomly snapping, but they're not actually like trying to eat anything. So they're all just kind of standing three feet away from these horrible mutant plant monsters, and uh, they find the letter on the ground. And Amy opens it the right way and finds out that, that uh, Tails has been taken to the Lightning Bolt Society. And they think that he's been kidnapped. Um, oh, by the way, they actually know who the Lightning Bolt Society are. They're guys that steal fruits from the fruit stand in the market. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're fruit thieves. I guess that's why they were spying on the orchard. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so... Oh, by the way, the, the guy in the tree disguise, he's a member of them. He's actually in the club in the tree costume. He can't get the zipper open, so he's stuck in the tree costume for now. Oh, and uh, we get recurring characters. Like, um, when they, they take their cloaks off, and that, that walrus with the sideways tusks, he, he's, um, he, he was one of the big members of the club. And we also get to see um, um, Bill, Bill the evil intern. Yeah, I think that's his name. Yeah, we got... This is like his second reoccurrence. Like, he had, um... In last week's episode, Eggman skipped out on the check at the restaurant. He's like, hey! And now he's actually back. And, like, like um... He, he, he says that their stated plan is to control the world's fruit supply or something like that. 
And like, um, it's nice to see characters recur. I mean, recurring characters are how you slowly get world building and development. Like, um, yeah, like we, seeing recurring elements like Ice King and Marceline and and the uh, and the Fire Kingdom. This is this is how we got it. This is how Adventure Time grew to be such a great thing that it is today. So hopefully, assuming they continue this show these subtle little character moments and cameos will evolve into an actual developed world with a fairly expansive cast, just like those shows did. Hoping. Um, so, so, uh, so Dr. Eggman, he has, like, cameras, and he calls them the Lightning Dolts, and, uh, he thinks that since they invited Tails to be their leader, they're gonna team up with Sonic and then he'll never get to keep them out of his dumpsters, so he goes to stop them, and, uh, and, so and Sonic and Amy, they say that they're gonna go rescue Tails while Knuckles and Sticks hold off the evil plants. Um, so, uh, so when they all, they all get there, and Tails is like, wait a minute, you want me to be evil? I'm, I'm not evil. And, and like, you betrayed us all! That's delightfully evil! Now I'm confused. But before before they can make any kind of aggressive move against Tails, like they know like like you you think that um that this would be the situation where he'd say that he's not actually with them, so if you're not with us, you're against us, and they do aggressive things towards him, they never get to do that. Um for reasons that I will tell you in just a second, because it's actually a joke where T Sales and Amy are arguing about how they're going to infiltrate. Sonic wants to burst in through the door, and Amy wants to disguise themselves as pizza men so that they can get them to open the door for them. And this leads to a cliché, which I actually kind of like, where the where two characters are arguing about, about how to accomplish a task, and then the task... A, an easy solution to the task presents itself, but they don't see it because they're arguing. In this case, they're arguing about how they're going to break in there. When one of the guys comes in with the garbage, like, Hey, excuse me, can one of you strangers hold the door open while I... And they turn around and say, Not now! And they get back to arguing. and they're like, mm. So he just leaves the garbage on the ground and closes the door. <laughs> that's, a, that, that, that's a gag. It's a gag that I like. It's, um... It's one of those things that's really quick passing. Like, it doesn't really... It's it's not like in Spongebob where they drag out Patrick's stupidity to ludicrous levels. Uh, it's like it's actually like a quick moment where characters who are focused on one thing actually miss another thing. That's, a, that's funny. That's good. I like it. <laughs> um, okay, so we're moving. We're moving. Um, hmm. What else do we do? Uh, right, so, Sonic bursts in, so just, just when Tails reveals that he's not evil, Sonic bursts into the wall, like, ha-ha, Amy runs up holding a pizza. I don't think she quite got how the pizza infiltration works. And then Eggman comes in on a pole made of light, and Sonic's like, ooh, that entrance had pizzazz. So, uh... So Eggman, Eggman's yelling at them for, for teaming up with Sonic. He says, we're not here to team up with Sonic. I'm like, oh, so why don't you fight him? We don't have any weapons. Find some! So they go to the, to the hors d'oeuvres table and they start throwing food at Sonic and Amy. And of course they dodge Matrix style. And when they run out of food, they don't know what to do. And Eggman's like, you guys are dolts. Words heard. There's no other way to put it. Dolts. <laughs> um... Yeah, so, uh, what sounds, um, well, there would be a big fight, except all the members of the society want to get autographs from Eggman, so while he's distracted with that, they all just leave, and, um, they go back to the, to the gar, they go back to the orchard where, uh, Knuckles says, hey guys, it rained while you were gone, because the plants are now twice as big and they're actually being aggressive and sticks and Knuckles had to fight them off. So Sonic manages to destroy some, but then Tails comes along with his deforestator, I think that's what we're going to call it now, and he destroys the orchard. So, so I was like, alright, your invention actually did have a good use. Now, you gotta replant this orchard. I'm like, yeah, he still has to do that. Um, and then we cut back to Dave. He's making himself a hamburger. He's like, oops, almost forgot the sesame seeds. So he takes the mutant seed gun and he shoots them onto the bun. And then 
Then he laughs maniacally as he takes a bite. Um, it, like, you see, this is one of those things. Like, is this just going to be a gag? Or are they going to follow up on it? Like, is Dave eating these mutant sesame seeds, is it going to make him mutate into some kind of evil plant monster? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, if, if they follow up on Dave eating mutant seeds and it does something to him, that would be really cool. I hope they do something with it, because that sounds like a really cool thing. Alright, so, uh, this episode... Um, I like how, um, remember how I said this episode, like, like, the concept of the basic rule of law doesn't seem to apply to Sonic's universe for some reason? Um, like, this is, this is, you see Sonic, you see Sonic and his group, they're, they're heroes, they're the good guys. But then we also see here, we have the average citizenry that are bad guys, which is a thing. Um, of course there's also, there's always things like, like, uh, like Dr. Eggman is like the top tier bad guy, and then Sonic and his friends are like the top tier heroes, so, um, so, so that we, we see like a lower tier group of bad guys, ones that apparently want to run a fruit monopoly with their, with their ho cloaked hood society. Um, and, uh, um, are we gonna see lower tier good guys in the future? Like, like that, like that beaver guy that said, that said actually before every sentence? Like, like is he an example of a lower tier good guy? Actually, I'd say my only weakness is my crippling cowardice. Like, like, um, yeah, we, are we gonna see more loser good guys? I mean, we saw loser bad guys, I wanna see some loser good guys now. Um, <laughs> that's, cause, uh... You gotta remember, uh, they don't necessarily have to work by the laws of our world, but they have to work by the laws of their own world. Well, uh, which is apparently is a world where there is either no police force or a horribly ineffective police force, and um, and citizens can just kind of choose to swing good or evil. Like like being good or evil is a political decision, like being an Autobot or a Decepticon. <laughs> uh. This is gonna be fun to observe. Uh, I really hope this series gets another season and they can expand on these funny ideas. Cause I'd really like to see this continue. I don't want to see this end after only one season like so many other shows. Um, Cause if, if the show ends after only one season, you're gonna be left with a bunch of, of uh, hanging plot threads and just meaningless puns and shout outs. But if they get a second season, they can follow up on this stuff, and then we can see how retroactively smart they were. Think about it. That's how this works. You gotta give them more seasons. I think every show should have at least two seasons. The first season to establish things, and the second season to see how they can follow up on these, on, on these um, establishments. If you only give them one season, there's no follow-up. Of course, it could still fail after two seasons. I think Teen Titans Go is, is, uh, has only become even more wretched in its second season than it was in its first. But, um, um, you know, the, the idea is you give them a shot. You let them try for a second season. You don't just cancel them. Like, like with Symbionic Titan and, and um and Green Lantern, and Young Justice, and Thundercats. I'm sad now, because I'm thinking of all the good shows that were canceled after one season, and Teen Titans Go gets two. Uh. Alright, I think that's all I wanted to talk about this week. Um, Alright, this has probably been a longer than average video. Let's see what the timer says. I've been talking for a half an hour? Okay, sorry about that, folks. I'll see you next week.